How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Contesting the Point. I go by the name of Malik Forte, and this week I am joined by returning champion Chance Cast and a new challenger, the legendary Joe DeLuca. You might know him as Merc. Uh, what's the haps, boys? How you guys feeling? Uh, tumultuous times, Malik. I would say I'm feeling as good as I possibly could given the situation, you know? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I'm yeah, doing yeah. all right. I, I didn't know Chance was the champ. The uh -huh. only person I've matched up with is Maven. For some reason, we have four, four <laughs> episodes just going head-to-head, -head, so I, I've been looking forward to this. I'm ready to have some fun. So oh, your yes. skills are sharp, then. You're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, you just got to get used to that old man yelling at you. This is, this is going to be a good matchup. I'm looking forward to it. Well, for everybody out there who doesn't know the rules of the game, let me go ahead and lay them out for you. I'm going to present a headline from the CDL. I'm then going to give a hot take on the story. One of the guests will defend the hot take while the other attacks it. I'll award points for convincing arguments, and after three stories, whoever has the most points wins 60 seconds to pop off in our Astro Listen Up moment. Is that cope aesthetic, guys? You ready for it? Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go ahead and hop into our first story, shall we? We got the Minnesota Home Series coming up this week. And guys, let me tell you, it's going to be a banger because all top five teams will be in attendance. So let's take a look at the groups real quick. In Group A, we have Atlanta, Dallas, Minnesota, and Seattle. And then over in Group B, we have Chicago, Florida, Toronto, and the LA Gorillas. Now, I believe that the favorites to come out of Group A will most definitely be Atlanta and Dallas. And I think a lot of people can also agree that the favorites going in for Group B would be Chicago and Florida. But I also have a feeling that we're due for an upset. So with that being said, my scorching hot take is Toronto will make it out of Group B. Now, uh, I have Merck right here who is not quite siding with that. Tell me, man, what is it about Toronto that you don't see with them coming out of Group B? I, I've really been liking the improvements that the Toronto Ev Ultra they have been making, right? And, yeah. and it's really been the story of can they get their roster together? What is their five-man roster? And they finally seem to found it, but they also have a very unique play style. They play certain maps, a lot of Hackney Yard, a lot of Ramaza. And I think that teams are going to continue to, to learn those vetoes and veto those very well. Then you look at the teams that they're going to be going up against in their group. Florida who I think is the, the pick for me to get out. Um, they've just made a roster change, and roster changes have really been the, the story of our league these last couple months. And the reason is, is because the teams that have been making roster changes, they've found pretty instant success, I would say. And the reason is, is similar to Toronto, you have to find the right roster. And the fact is, is that for the Florida Mutineers, they have made two grand finals. They have beaten Chicago multiple times. They have shown what it takes to be one of the best teams in the world. Is well, plain and simple, they have won a home series. So I think with the pickup of Awakening, you finally have Pharaoh in a comfortable position. It feels like the roles and the players are finally going to be comfortable. And that's something that we always talked about with Mox. Knowing that he was going to be running the flex because you have Skies on the team, there was a weakness there. And I think the pickup of Awakening, you're going to now have Farrell on that flex role where he's going to be so comfortable with another AR. It's just going to make these guys better. The fact is, is that there is a foundation. And the Florida Mutineers have, well, they've just been trying to, to fix it. Fix that foundation so they can get back to a final that they've already shown that they can do twice this year. All right, so Merck, you actually believe that Florida's going to get their act together at this week. Unlike what they did at their own home series when they completely flubbed and went out 0-2. Yeah. I, I think it's time. I think that uh, all the roster changes uh, around the league have inspired them to, well, we, we have to do something. Something is wrong. And I like the fact that, you, you know what, they don't look at that home series win that they were able to put together and say, nope, this is the formula that works. They noticed that there was a problem. They weren't happy with it, and they, they, they made that move right away. All right, all right. Well, uh, on the flip side of things, how are you feeling about the ultra chance? Uh, defend it, man. Tell me why the Ultra are going to be the team that pulls off that upset. I think your head's in the right place, Malik. I really do. Like, uh, Merck obviously makes great points about Florida, but for me, o Awakening is just like an unknown factor, right? I don't know what he's going to bring to the table. Yes, there have been a lot of roster changes with that instant success, but until I see it, I'm just not going to be a believer. I'm not going to buy in straight away. Even if the potential is absolutely going to be there, I just look at the evidence, right? The last time we saw Toronto play, they looked fantastic. They picked up some pretty big wins against some pretty big teams. And event, like, they finally made out of groups, right? Toronto has been a team that 
struggling. They finally make it out of groups, and then they go into a, an Optic match where Optic has been scorching hot, and they still take them to a Game 5 round 11. So, like, as high as we've been on this Optic team, Slash has taken over all this, like, Toronto were toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. It seems like they finally have the roster. They really want to stick with these five. Now they're starting to make those improvements, and if it's been, what, maybe four weeks since we've last seen them, they look pretty damn good. I think they exceeded pretty much everyone's expectations. I see no reason why that's not going to continue. At least a slight uptrend for this team. I think they're going to be on point, and straight up, I just think they're going to be stronger than the Florida team. Like, unless Awakening actually does make, like, the, the correct changes for this team that they need, I don't think that Florida team is going to be strong enough, so... In my mind, it is a what if versus what we know. What if Awakening is going to be great? It'll help the team, sure. But I do know that Toronto, the last time we saw them play, were pretty damn good. And again, toe-to-toe -to -toe with a team that is now one of the best in the world. So I'm looking for improvements from that squad. I think they're going to be able to make it out of groups. Any chance that we see Toronto possibly upset, say, like a Chicago? Or is Florida kind of their ticket in? I think, well, Florida is definitely the easier route than Chicago, but I do think there is upset potentially even there, right? Like, yes, Chicago looked great. Yes, they won a tournament, but even still, like, weaknesses a little bit in the respawn. Like, honestly, that's one of the crazier things for me about the Chicago team is just how fantastic their S&D game has been on point the entire time, and maybe that's an opportunity for Toronto, right? Like, they are in a, a very unique situation, the Toronto Ultra are, where they have five men on the bench, five incredibly talented players on the bench where they can scrim against their own B team, and it's good practice, and that also means they they can scrim S&D against them all the time and be one of the only teams that can truly get S&D practice in on a consistent basis. So there's upset potential for Chicago, who have been a little bit iffy in the respawn, certainly not at S&D. But again, Florida is the uh, the easier route for them to make it through. I'll go, a, I'll go a further step. I don't believe okay. that the Toronto Ultra are going to beat the Gorillas in round one. I think what Ooh. we have been seeing in the Gorillas <laughs> has been an improvement. If you, you saw their last performance, they weren't able to get out of groups, but they finally won a series. I think with the addition of Saints and how well that their search and destroy has been, you know, these last couple of home series, I think that the Gorillas can upset the Toronto Ultra. Until I see it, I'm not going to be quite a believer. I've seen Toronto at their best they've seen the entire year was the most recent time we've seen them play. I don't see any reason why they can't get better. And yes, I'm looking for them to prove that once again. But game five, round 11 against Optic, in my mind, weighs more than two roster changes that might be successful. Well, I think a game five, round 11 doesn't sound like a home series win. So I think the Florida Mutineers should be getting out. I mean, they've only gotten a one semifinal so far. And yeah, you're hoping for it. I mean, we've seen it once and I'm happy. I, I'm very happy for the Toronto Ultra because they had to make the turnaround. But the fact is, is like you've been saying it, we've only seen it one time. Okay. I, I, it's, it's interesting to me that nobody pointed out that the Ultra in that, in that last home series, they were very strong against some of the better teams being Minnesota Rocker, the New York Subliners who are looking a lot better. Uh, they, they look, the Ultra looked pretty much unstoppable against those teams. So it should be interesting to see what they carry in to this week. I believe you guys both make very good points though. So I'm going to bring this round to a draw, 5-5. Five, five. All right, moving on to our next story. We've got only five season events left, including the Minnesota Home Series. So looking at the standings, there's a few misplaced teams that I would like to point out. The Mutineers are top five, but they've been performing pretty poorly as of late. You also have teams like Optic Gaming LA and the New York Subliners who've been performing a lot better, yet they still sit at the bottom of the standings. So all that being said, my hot take is that Florida are the most misplaced team in the standings right now. Chance, can you tell me why that is the case? I can tell you exactly why. They're in fifth place right now, and they've just looked incredibly shaky as of late, right? They were shaky enough to the point that immediately after what? Winning the grand finals, getting to the, the grand finals, and the one before that, but getting the second place, like all that success, they weren't faithful in it. They started to get shaky. They made a roster change. So yeah. now we go back to that what if scenario of like, yes, maybe they'll have success. But again, until I see it, not going to believe it. And I just <laughs> think all the teams beneath them have just shown a lot of great things, right? The teams that are immediately beneath them won the London Royal Ravens looked incredible. They made it to a grand finals, the very first tournament they performed with the new roster. The team just under them is going to be Optic LA, who also look fantastic, who have also seen a, a finals as well in the home series, who look like a different beast of a team. You keep going further down that list, and then the teams like the subliners pop up. Like All these teams that are just beneath right now where the Florida Mutineers are, they just look a lot better. Really outside of the top three teams, 
anything could happen and there could be massive shakeup potential with all the rosters. I think Florida right now is at their most vulnerable. I think just the fact that they're making a roster change uh, is pretty good evidence of that. And I think all the other teams that have solidified their roster changes and know what they want to go with moving forward are all looking great, are all on the uptick, and are all hyper-competitive right now. I don't think it's going to stick for the Florida Mutineers. So you pretty much are not on the team of the Florida Mutineers. You're, you're I hate Florida, apparently, today. That's what we're <laughs> doing. That I, I'm today, with it. I'm with it. <laughs> today you've been going going pretty hard on them. But, Merck, man, uh, t- t- what, mm. what can you say against that? Is there uh, any other team that is really misplacing the standings right now? Sure. I I, I mean, of course there's some other uh, other teams that are misplaced. But I, but I think it's interesting. Uh, I think maybe you could look at Paris, right, and say, you know, Paris, they overachieved early on. They really had our hopes up. But... You know, when, when teams figured out the game and, and they started to you know, really figure out their rosters, now Paris is, is truly str- struggling, right? You look at their last three events, they had double bopped out of groups, they've won one game. Their last three home series, they have 10 points. So it, it was their early start that made them strong, but I'm just gonna defend Florida. I think Florida is, is right where they need to be. Uh, the fact is, is they've gotten to a semifinal, they've gotten to a final, and they've won the final, right? And they did that by beating Chicago and beating Minnesota. And the fact is, is, you know, he brings up a point of these teams, you tell that Florida, they, they knew something was off, they had to make a roster change. You could probably argue a team like Minnesota now, who just got, hasn't made a semifinal in two home series. A lot of yep. people are asking, what if, have they been figured out? Do they need to make a, a a roster change, right? Because Minnesota is considered a top four team in the world by a lot of people, but they have yet to win an event. They have been to a couple of finals, but they don't have closers. When I look at the Florida Mutineers, I love the superstars on this team. I love watching Skies play, Pharaoh play. And, and listen, they're taking a risk with Awakening, but it's a risk they feel will pay off. And I, I just have to respect that. I love the foundation. I'm going to bring that up again that Florida has. There are teams in our league well, besides them, there's only three others that have won a home series just to prove how difficult that it is. And then there's you know, teams who are trying to make all these roster changes just to catch up to them. So I think the Florida Mutineers are right where they need to be. They're in a really good position. And if Awakening, if he can bring the heat, they're going to be a very tough team to beat. Okay. All right. So, so you know what? I was actually with Chance on this one at the beginning. And chance, I want to give you, I want to give you a chance to, I want to give you a chance to give a rebuttal because uh, I do think pointing out Paris that was a, a good team to point out, and also it is worth mentioning that Florida did win a home series. They do have some accolades from earlier in the season that we cannot glance over. So to discredit their positioning in the standings, I feel like would be a little bit dismissive on my part to do so. But I want to give you one more chance, chance to come back on this one. So uh, you have anything to say in rebuttal to that? I mean, sure. You could go a little bit deeper. Like, I think the talent that we were expecting to be on point has really started to show up. Like, a lot of these players that, for whatever reason, at the start of the year just started slow or really starting to turn their game around. Optic is the prime example where Slasher has just been a beast of a man and has been just at the point now where he is completely taking over games. So, you look at the Florida Mutineers team, I don't see, like, that superstar talent. Don't get me wrong. They have great players. They have a great cast. They have a very well-built team. But at the same time, I don't think it's enough to really keep the teams like the Ravens away who looked incredible this past weekend whose search game is on point the optic who again have like just like sleeping giants right like dashy like all these guys we haven't seen at the absolute best that we have seen them at some point in their career they're still working on those improvements and they're all all teams that are beneath right now the Florida Mutineers so I just don't see it I, I think too many teams towards the bottom have too much talent to stay down there for too long I I, I just I'll give you optic I think London is is right where we expected them. Middle of the pack. New York Subliners, I mean, they've been talked about as one of the best respawn teams in the world. And then, yeah, they've gotten to a couple of semifinals. They've gotten out of groups in back-to-back weeks. But the question is, is can they win? The fact that the Florida Mutineers were able to pull off a home series. And it's not like they, they pulled off a home series that we saw Chicago just win, where some of the top teams weren't there. They beat them in Minnesota. They beat us Chicago. So that just tells me that Florida... They were a little bit ahead of the curve. They were able to figure it out. The bottom of the teams that are figuring out their their rosters are going to catch up to us. Something needs to change here, right? There's a crack in our in you know in our foundation. So let's pick up awakening. Yes, it's a it's a risk, but it's a risk that I think we have to take. And I, I respect that because I do not think there are a lot of teams that will take that risk. Florida knows that they want to set themselves off, set themselves up for the best opportunity 
at the end of the year. And I think they're doing that with this roster change. Well, so you'll give me optic then, but how about this? Like the point you made about the Ravens is like still over the hump about actually winning a tournament, about mm -hmm. actually beating like the Atlanta Chicago's of the world, but in the straight up head to head, like right now, in my mind, obviously it's never hundred percent clear, but I'm like 80, 20 on the Ravens in my mind against Florida, like in the straight up matchup, do you actually believe that Florida has the edge in that match? Do I believe they have the, the edge? No, I I wouldn't put it 80-20, though. I think it's more of like a 50-50, a 60-40 in favor of London. But that's just because I haven't seen Florida since the last home series. And that's fair, but again, that's that's my only thing of like, yes, Florida in a good spot. I think they can chip away at points, but I don't see the team winning a tournament, right? Uh, again, I'm just a little bit more hard on, on the roster change than you. And you do make great points of like, they see teams coming up, so they try to get that bump. But in my mind, at the very least, the two teams immediately beneath them that are within 20, 30 points, who are, have already been teams that have made grand finals, who have been getting 30 points per tournament. Like we could very well see after this tournament, the Ravens take over their spot. Or not the Ravens. Yes, 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 the Ravens indeed. Well, Chance, I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Chance. I feel like I feel like all, every point you make is exactly how I feel personally. But Merck, you do make good points about Florida's current achievements and what they've done so far. The fact that they were able to take out these top teams, it, if anything, establishes their position in that top five spot. Will they stay in that spot? That remains to be seen. Right now, Florida, you're on a clock, but we have cut other teams' bail before. So with that, I'm going to give Joe this round seven to six. And that brings our total right now, 12 points for Merck and 11 for Chance. For our last story, let's go ahead and talk some roster changes, shall we? Now, overall, every team that has made a roster change has benefited from those changes. You have Mac, who's turned the New York subliners around, Chino moving to OGLA, Pristini to the Huntsman, you even have the Zero who went to the Royal Ravens and then they made a final. So with all this in mind, let's discuss whose changes have been the most important. My hot take is that Mac joining the Subliners was the best roster change of this season. Merck, could you please tell the people why that is a valid hot take that I just made there? Yeah, I'm going to defend the heck out of that for you, Malik. And I'm going <laughs> to tell you why. Uh, look at New York before Mac. They had 10 points in I, I think to a lot of people may have been one of the most un uh, impressive. I, I don't even know if that's a word. Uh, they were horrible. They were just not good with the, the talent that they had on their roster. Everybody thought that New York was probably going to be about the middle of the table of a team and they would probably crack into a couple of semifinals with their roster with zero on it. I mean, you, you just talked about zero. The guy just went to London and was in a final, right? Like. The fact that they were un underperforming, you know, with that roster was was crazy to us. And it just felt like something was off. And well, yeah, it was. So Mac right away. He comes and it, it's a tough first home series. It's the Chicago home series. And they have to play Chicago right away. And you're thinking, well, welcome to the league. And well, he shows up. They win in the map five. They then have to play the Atlanta face in round two. And they go to a game five. You know, j it just shows the... I mean, how much that they improved just right then and there. They end up losing to Chicago, and they, they don't get out of groups. But I think that was eye-opening for us. It was like, okay, New York is finally here, and we can't wait to watch them in future home series. And since that point, they have gotten 20 points at each event. They have gone from, what, bottom of the lead to starting to work their way back up. They've gone from 10 points to 60 points with the addition of Mac. And you can't even criticize his individual performance when he's playing you know, two of the best teams in the world, Chicago and Atlanta, at his first event, he still has a .95 overall, with, with, in which his role, that's basically a, where they're at for the average, and, and maybe even sometimes overperforming around a .95, just what we've seen. Then after that, he has a 1.19 overall at Seattle. He has a 1.15 overall at Florida. The guy is taking over games, and you hear him in the listenings. They get hyped up when Max making a play. It just feels like he has rejuvenated this roster. And now the the, the question is, when is New York going to get hot on a Sunday? When are they going to win a home series? Yeah, I feel like it's only a matter of time, given the, the way they've been playing. That's but the hope. Chance, chance what, what, <laughs> other, what other roster change can you say to compete with that one? Well, I, 
so I mean, he makes a lot of great points. I think on an individual basis uh, of all players that have been swapped in or out or whatever it's going to be, he might be the best one, at least performance rise uh, of players that got moved around because his stats are absurd in general, let alone for the fact that he's like running an SMG, right? Like his stock is incredibly high, but at the same time, that's the individual. And if we're talking about roster change, I want results for the team. And yes, the subliners have been scraping a little more points here, get 20 points in the past two tournaments. But then I just look at other teams, right? Optic make a change, boom, they look like a completely different beast. They're making grand finals. They got players that are completely taking over games. They managed to get at least like a second place. You got a team like Florida, who early in the year made a change, pick up Pharaoh, immediately won a tournament. You got a team like Chicago, who picked up Pristini, immediately won a tournament, like, or even the Ravens, who pick up zero and don't win the tournament immediately, but get that second place and look better. Like, yes, Mac has helped his team turn around, but there is at least four other teams off the top of my head that could have maybe not the turnaround, but results driven evidence of like you make a change you really start putting in the work in immediately and like uh, another point for the subliners is matt comes in they look great 20 points the past two tournaments to me that means not improving like they're making it out of groups they still can't get that next win you see the instantaneous improvement from the ravens you see instant improvement from optic who then follow up on that and continue make improvements down the line and that's also a team i think can get better later on same thing with chicago like they just won a tournament and i still think they can get better i don't think Pristini looked nearly as good as he's going to at this tournament in future tournaments. So they're winning tournaments and they're going to get even better long term. This is not to take away Mac. Again, as an individual, he's been on point. There's just too many other teams that have made roster changes that have driven just better results immediately and long term. I can't give that role to the New York Subliners. Yeah, Chance makes a good point. A lot, a lot of these teams have taken it all the way to the end after making roster changes, whereas the New York Subliners haven't quite made it to the finals yet. you have anything to say in defense of that, Merck? Oh uh, yeah, it's it's tough to to defend that one, right? Because that's what I I was just saying uh, <laughs> yeah, about exactly. Florida, right? The fact that they make a roster change, they're able to win the, to to win an event. I, I mean, listen, Chicago adding Pristini. I think if they had Gunless last home series, they were still the favorites. They probably still end up winning because you talk about London, who just made a roster change. Optic was still very much a favorite. Chicago's big test is the Minnesota home series with Pristini. It, it was impressive. The Florida one with Farrow, I, I think, took everybody by surprise. But yeah. I don't, they were still a, a top four team, top five team at the time. They got to a, a grand final with Pristini. So it felt like those teams that made yeah. those roster changes were already solid. London, still middle of the table, it, even with Jurd. The fact is, is New York has gone from bottom of the barrel without Mac, 10 points to. Finally getting out of out of groups, making back-to-back -back semis. And I just don't know if there's been an, an impact, right, be, in talking about where the teams were. Like, yes, some of those roster changes were great, and they led to home yeah. series victories. But when you talk about just how different the New York subliners are with Mac, to me, it's maybe 11th, 12th team in the league, all the way up to, I think some people argue top four. If you look at the, the last home series, people thought that New York was going to make the grand final versus Chicago because of their trajectory. So it just feels like the impact that Mac has made on this roster is different than those others around the league. I mean, just as a, a quick response to that, it, it it's weird. It depends on where you want to pick of like the, the starting point for this argument of what point of the year. But if you just want to go straight on points, there was a point of the year very early on where New York was above Optic, right? And then Optic again, after they made the roster switch, they also go on a massive tear, start getting a ton of points. And they went from the very bottom league now to seventh place rather than the subliners who were still in ninth. Like, yes, the subliners again are hyper competitive, getting better results and are a little bit consistent, but they're still like kind of middle of pack results right? You're getting out of groups. You're not doing anything past that. You're just stuck in the middle. All these other teams that have made roster changes have gone a little bit above and beyond that. If not outright winning tournaments, just having a little bit more success in subliners. And obviously it's a long game, right? If New York come out and win champs, then damn, that is your clear cut answer. One of the best roster changes of all times. But right now in this moment, leading in the Seattle home series, there's just teams that have performed better as a whole than the subliners based on who's made the roster changes. Yeah, it just feels like there's still, and I don't think it's Mac, but I, I think something with the, the roster, they're coming up a little bit short in it, and it's sort of tough because with teams improving in these roster changes coming in, it's going to be even, it, we've seen it, how difficult it's going to be to win these home series. So has the window closed now for, for the New York subliners, right? Because these last 
two to three home series where you felt like maybe some teams were trending downwards. They were trending up. There was an opportunity for them. And now as London gets better, as Toronto gets better, Chicago gets better with their roster change. We even talked about how darn good Atlanta and Dallas still are. Yeah. So uh, it, it's going to be tougher and tougher for the New York subliners. I, I mean, I hope they figure it out, but it just feels like there's still something off when they get deep into tournaments. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I do think that you made a really good point at the beginning, Merck, that the fact that they're at the bottom, yeah. you know, for most of the season. And after this change, they've looked like a completely different team. They've taken the Atlanta phase to game five. They beat the Chicago Huntsmen. This is stuff that we wouldn't have expected from that team we saw at the very beginning. No, it's but, just uh, you wish they were doing it in semifinals or in grand. They're just yeah. not. They're doing it in group play. It feels like uh, right. when Sunday Sundays start up, something either right. teams are catching on to them, catching on to their vetoes, their gameplay, right. or or what. Something happens on Sunday. They got to figure it out. Right, right. No, I agree with you. Uh, the subliners have low-key been one of my favorite teams to watch since they've made this change it's with Mac joining the squad. So it, it's kind of hard for me to go against them, but I feel like Chance, he attacked that so valiantly. He brought up so many solid points. I'm going to give him a little extra on top of that. Uh, this round's going to end eight points to six points by way of Chance, which means our final score is 19-18. Chance, you are the winner of our Astro Listen Up moment this week. Uh, a champion once again. Do you have anything you would like to say to the people? 60 seconds, all right. I'm incredibly excited for the weekend we have ahead of us. The competition is as good as it's been the entire year. All the teams now, it seems like, are heavy hitters. Like Minnesota, who's been a top four, now look like one of the worst teams. And that just goes to show of how damn good everybody else is going to get. This entire episode, we've basically been talking about all the roster changes that have come into the league and how many teams have made the improvements. The Ravens, Florida Mutineers, whoever it's going to be, all the teams across the board minus Seattle Surge, pretty much. Uh, they've all been great, and it's just an exciting time to be a Call of Duty fan. Got a couple tournaments left. I don't really see the competition slowing down at all, and hopefully by chance time, it's going to be just a toss-up of who's going to win, and really any of the 12 might be able to pull it off. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for this episode of Contesting the Point. Thanks once again to our lovely casters, Merck and Chance, for stepping in and doing battle. And guys, the Minnesota Home Series is coming up this weekend. If you want to watch any CDL Home Series event, this is the one. Our five top teams will be there. So make sure you show up and tune in. 4 p.m. Eastern, all the action starts. And with that, we'll see you guys then.